Hey Neo Church, thanks for hopping online this morning on Facebook or YouTube, wherever we have you guys at. Uh, just a quick reminder, we have kids content over at neochurch.org slash online. So you can go check that out after the service if you haven't yet watched it. Also at 11, I'll be back over on Instagram Live with the students discussing their video uh, and just seeing how their week is going. So here's Martin for some quick announcements. Hey Neo Church, it's Martin Hale here with just a few quick updates. Uh, as you know, we're not currently meeting physically here at the church, uh, but that doesn't stop us from being the church, uh, the hands and the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ. What we're doing during this difficult time is we're collecting uh, donations for our partners, University Settlement uh, up in Slavic Village, up in Slavic Village, just 77 North. Uh, they're looking for uh, non-perishable food items, peanut butter, canned goods, uh, hygiene items, toilet paper, if you can get your hands on some of that stuff. With people out of work right now, very difficult time for everyone. And what they do is they, they pass those out to the community. So uh, if you're able to stop up at the church anytime over this period uh, over the next few weeks there's, there'll be a couple bins outside of the front doors of the church just drop them off in there and we'll make sure to get that over to university settlement uh, also just want to remind you guys even though we're not meeting right now the best way to keep neo church healthy and staying open really is to continue to give your first fruits online at neochurch.org there's a give button uh, at the top right you can just click that put in your account information and that'll make sure that your tithe and offerings gets to neo church and we can continue uh, to be the great church uh, that we are even though we're not physically coming together um, and last but not least, 7.30 Wednesdays, uh, we're going to be starting up a prayer time where uh, myself or someone else from the church uh, comes together to take your prayer requests. It'll be a time of devotion. It'll be a time of just a quick message to hear what the Lord's put on your heart uh, to pray. Pray for our nation. Pray for our leaders. Pray for our decision makers uh, during this time of viruses and corona and all, all this craziness that's happening. People not working. Uh, so we're not going to fear. We're just going to put our faith and trust in the Lord. Uh, so visit our, uh, our Facebook Live, our Facebook account, 730. Look forward to that the next several Wednesdays, 730 p.m. Hey, welcome and thank you so much for joining us once again. We're excited that you are here, even though you're probably in your couch or you're in your comfortable chair, maybe you're at your desk, but thank you so much for uh, joining us once again. Uh, last week was pretty cool. We were able to see a lot of people jump in. That was one of our highest viewed services ever, which is amazing that it went beyond the walls of this place, beyond the walls of this church. We saw people tuning in from different states, which was pretty amazing. We saw people that we knew did not go to church at all. So we were pretty excited to see the reach that we had, even though we are here and you're sitting at your house. There were some people that uh, sent some pictures into us. We were pretty excited about seeing. Uh, let's look at some of those pictures from last week, if you don't mind. This is, the, uh, this is the Gonzalez family. I don't think you guys knew that I was actually gonna put this in here, but you have a nice 10 foot screen TV. That's, I look huge. So that's pretty awesome. Let's see, we have another family. Let's see, the Schlund family. Uh, they're watching, I think, at the exact same point as well. Uh, but there's Patrick over there. He's enjoying himself. And Mike, he doesn't look too happy, but that's all right. Uh, let's see who else we have. We have Rob and Mary Jo Towns, and Rob's showing off a little bit. He's actually playing along with the music. I wish I could play the guitar like that, but uh, we love them. Let's see who else do we have. All right, we have some kids jumping in, and uh, we tried providing different stuff for the kids and doing different things, and it uh, looks like Jackson Hoover there on the right. He's, uh, he's way too close to TV, but he's really enjoying it, and there's Miles, of course. I think James might be enjoying it more than Miles. This is the way James looks once, uh, yeah, once I come on, he lays down on the ground. So we see how that works over there at the Bartlett house. Uh, what else do we got? We have Martin. He was able on Wednesday to do an online prayer time, and we're going to be doing that this next week as well. So hopefully you can jump in on that. That was awesome seeing him. And that, that reached a ton of people as well, so that was pretty cool. And then Hunter and Megan and Marjorie just uh, having fun with the students, and that's coming up at 11 o'clock also. So hey, if you got students in the room in the house, make sure they jump onto that at 11 o'clock. They will be live. It's interactive back and forth. Uh, last week, once again, was really cool. Uh, it was an amazing time just being able to see so many comments come in. Uh, if you get tired of the comments and you're watching on your phone, just turn it sideways and the comments will go away. But I think I got more amens last week than I ever have before. So I know there are virtual amens and someone was just typing them, but uh, don't be afraid. And when we meet back together, I encourage you to not be afraid to say amen and interact as much as you do, of course, online as well. So thank you so much, of course, for joining us and being here and uh, having some fun with us. 
So we were gonna do an Easter series and uh, we kind of threw that out the window. Uh, Our Easter service, we will definitely still be giving an Easter message for sure. Uh, But sometimes when you start hearing questions being asked and when certain things happen and and take place, you just have to change things up. And that's of course what we did. Uh, We decided, you know what, it's time to change things a little bit. Um, And we decided to go a different direction with the series. And so the series that uh, we're gonna do is kind of I started hearing certain phrases a lot, and uh, the superintendent, his name's Joe Clark of our of Nordonia, the Nordonia school system. Uh, every email and every phone call, um, I kept hearing this. My wife and I, we kept going back and forth. With this unprecedented times, and a number of us are saying that. And so uh, we're doing a series, and it's simply this: it's an unprecedented times, and it's a series on survival and thriving during difficult days. So that's uh, kind of the idea behind this series. Last week we kind of started it. Uh, This is part two of that series. But you think of unprecedented, you think of almost, you think of this, this is crazy, but yet it could be good. There's an ominous feeling, but you know what? There's the unknown. Um, And those times could be over at any point, so there's some optimism to that as well. Uh, But I think you would agree that these are unprecedented times and there's a lot of things, of course, going on in our time. I don't know about you, but I heard a lot of different stuff this last week and I don't know, some of it was uh, a little depressing, I'll be honest. Uh, Somebody said the entire highway, they heard the entire highway system was gonna shut down. Um, I heard from somebody else that we were gonna be quarantined for two months in our homes. Um, I heard from somebody else that schools were not gonna go back in for like 18 months. A lot of you sitting at home, maybe it's a good thing you are at home because you just did a week of homeschooling and you're probably a hot mess right now. You probably haven't showered for five days and you probably haven't ate a normal meal for like four. A lot of us are eating canned beans and rice and and a whole lot of bread that's frozen. I don't know what the deal is. We're going crazy, but you know, there are some just, uh, these times are just kind of bizarre and where we get our information from really does determine how we respond. And so of course there are some serious things going on as hell, you know, as, as well. You know, you think, about, you think about like how long this will actually happen. You think about how long this will last. You think about the stock market. You think about your 401ks. You think about, you know, a possible run on the banks. You think about, you know, the hospitals. You think about, there's so many things, so many different angles to this. Um, I think just not knowing the length of time, I think is probably what is the most ominous thing through this. You know, unprecedented times, you know, just not knowing how long those times are gonna take place. It's one thing if you have a plan in place and you know, okay, for the next two or three months, you know what, this is what we can do. But when you don't know, man, that's difficult. You know, and that's what can get to you and get to me. And and no matter if you're Christian or non-Christian, man, we're human beings, you know what? Like we mentioned last week, you know, there's that fear that's involved and we get get riled up at times and we get panicky and anxious. And it doesn't mean that you're not a Christian, you don't love God, it's just, you know, it's difficult. And last week we said, and I need to tell you again, you know what, God has the entire world in his hand and nothing, nothing, nothing surprises him. So many of us get to the point where we, think that God is like, <laughs> he, he, you know, punches his angel beside him, he elbows his angel beside him, and, you know, they have this conversation, they're just laughing and pointing down, watching all these humans down, down on earth just going crazy, and that, that does not happen. That does not happen. You know, God is not surprised by anything. He is in control. God is faithful. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will not leave you. He will not forsake you. Some of us need to hear that. Some of us need to be encouraged by that. Some of us need to hear that over and over and over. So how in the world do we navigate this thing? You know, with all these uncertain times and these unprecedented, you know, (laughs) times that we live in, how do we navigate this? You know, how do we really truly believe that God is good through this? You know, it really comes down to my opinion, and there's a lot of other people with the same opinion, that it really comes down to our personal theology of who God is. You know, it comes down to your view of who God is and, and the time that you've spent with God in the past and, and how you've seen God answer prayer in the past and, and what you've seen God do personally as well in your family as well as at your church and your small group and the families that you love and care about. If you've walked with the Lord a long time, you're looking at this and going, you know what, this too will pass. That's kind of the mindset behind it. But for those that have not really gotten in deep into scripture and really tried to understand scripture or have read the, the passages and the different people, that have gone through things in scripture, your your faith could be so weak, it could be so shaken at any point. 
You, know, you look at people like, you go all the way back to the very beginning with Adam and Eve. Do you realize Adam and Eve dealt with one son murdering their other son? No single mom or dad should ever have to have one of their kids die. It's just one of those things. There should never be a miscarriage. There should never be famine. There should never be drought. There should never be anything like that. That's what we get to in our, in our, in our minds and in our hearts. And we, when we get to that point, when we start realizing that there's, there's pain and there's suffering in this world, we look to God and we go, how would you allow that to happen? <laughs> Can I be honest with you? There's been times in my life I've done the exact same thing. No one's excluded. But understand, we have to look through scripture and we have to go, you know what? These people that are contained in this book and these stories that we have weren't just stories by accident. Stories of David, a man after God's own heart, but he also spent 10 years running from a madman that wanted to murder him. You know, you look at Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. They're the patriarchs of ancient Israel. The patriarchs. One had to leave his hometown because of a famine. Another one was sold into slavery and then thrown into jail. He was, the, he was probably the best one out of the entire Bible is Joseph. You know, you look at that and you go, you know what? His faith does not seem to be shaken. How is that even possible? Because he realized the God that he served and he understood who that was. I encourage you today on the front end of this message, through all the stuff that's going on, through everything that's taking place, I encourage you, I encourage you to worship a God that you believe sees you. He knows that you're there because he's faithful. And if you missed last week, I encourage you to jump on and listen to part one of this, of this series. So what do we do? You know, where do we go from here? You know, there's so many people that are, that are asking these questions. There's so many people that are wanting to know, you know, what, 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 what are the next steps that we should take? Because it really does seem like the end of time is near. You know, there's a lot of people that have tried to predict the end of time. And, you know, there's conversations that are happening. And people, I've gotten text messages. I've gotten Facebook messages. I've even had some conversations and even some phone calls. I know people still use their cell phone. It's amazing. But I even had some phone calls. And people are asking these questions. And they're wondering, you know what, is Jesus coming back? My daughter had a conversation with some of her friends at school and they actually were having one of these conversations. And you sit back and you go, wow, people are talking about this. People, this is on their hearts. And then you sit back and you realize, wait a minute, you know what? God uses these things. If bad things never happened, like we mentioned last week, you know what, so many of us would never look up to the heavens. And so, so often God uses a stupid little virus to what? Wake us up. That's what happens so often. So, so many people are having these spiritual questions. So, what do we do now? You know, I love eschatology. I love the study of the end times. I love Revelation. I love Daniel. I love everything about it. I can get into the nuances of it. We don't do a lot of series about that here, but we do know there are certain things that we can say, you know what? This is going to happen. You know, I have a quick timeline. I'm not going to show it too long because some of you might make you nervous a little bit. But I'm going to show you a quick little timeline. And this is kind of like, you know, the, you know what we believe here. At Neo, so here's the first coming of Christ, right? Way back here, and here's the cross. We all know what happened on the cross. We're about ready to celebrate Easter here in about three weeks um, from now. I can't wait, I cannot wait. Uh, just pray that we can all meet together by then under one roof, uh, that would be amazing. But here's the cross, and we're about ready to celebrate that. Here's the present time. This is the church age is where we're at right here. So this is the church age, and then here we go. This little fun little little mark right here, this is the second coming for the church. This is the rapture. This is that moment in time where we go, you know what? It has begun, it has happened. And there's so many things that point to this time and that's kind of where we're at right now. Like, man, are we in this thing? You know, is this the end of days? Whatever that means. Is this the apocalypse? I mean, there's so many thoughts and ideas behind this. So many movies. You know, is everybody gonna turn into zombies? Is this gonna be I am legend all over? Is this gonna be the purge? I mean, there's so many thoughts like, oh, what is gonna happen? You know what? Times are crazy. Times are insane. And of course, you see the tribulation and you see that in the book of Revelation and that's all that real amazing, wild, kind of difficult times that people go through. The second coming of Christ, of course, and then the millennial reign of Christ. 
This is where we see the Olivet Discourse. Matthew is able to talk and the other disciples are able to talk with, with Christ there in the book of Matthew. And Christ is, is telling us all about this time period. The lion lays down with the lamb. And you know, it's an amazing, it's an amazing time. And we will be able to be with him someday in that period of time. And then finally, the last judgment, the great white throne. You don't want to be at that one. I'm going to be honest with you. You really don't want to be at that one. Pretty much if you're standing in line for the great white throne judgment, it doesn't end very well. And I'm being, I'm not, it's like, you know, you can laugh and joke and all this stuff, but that's for real. Then of course, eternity. That's where we get to spend eternity with God. It's such an amazing thing. That's such an amazing thing. As you look through all that and we try to get our heads wrapped around that, and some people will say, you know what, you know, can you give me some signs? You know, what are the things that are gonna take place? And you know, I listed some out here and I'll kind of, you know, run through these real quick with you. You know, but understand that at the beginning of this, no one knows the exact time. You know, I mean, it was kind of cool if you look back, you know, there, you would say there was this one moment where a lot of historians, a lot of people that study this would say, that was it. That was the mark where the end times began. <laughs> this time that we're in the end of days and it was, goes all the way back to 1948. Something unique happened in 1948 because if you read through your Bible and you read through Revelation, you're gonna realize that the nation of Israel is in it a lot. <laughs> And so in 1948, the nation of Israel, the Jewish people came back as a nation, right? And they were given land, their, their land that was promised to Abraham way back. And then in 1967, what Jerusalem was given back and they were able to, to have Jerusalem again as their capital. And we see that had to take place as you read through the book of Revelation as well. Another thing is this the rise and the embrace of, of the anti-Jewish mindset, which is crazy to me. You talk about you talk about racism to the extreme, and that's what this is. You look at the Holocaust, of course, back with World War II, and I, I've been doing more studying on that and just trying to understand how groups of people could just hate so much another group of people. Um, but you see this rise of this, the entire world hating this one <laughs> group, and that's one of the signs of the times as well. Uh, another thing is just the gathering of the Jewish people back in the land there has to be this mass <laughs> exodus from wherever they're at to come back to the nation of israel you see the the gospel being pro proclaimed to the nations um it, one of the signs is just every every nation every group of people being able to hear now there's a lot of people that still don't have the bible translated into their language which is a little bit frustrating a little bit sad and i know with technology a lot of people are working hard to try to get that done and yeah, there's a number of people that are just, you know, on the forefront of that, which is great. So you would look at that and you'd say, you know what, there's still this group of people that have not heard. So you could say, you know what, Jesus Christ will not return until then. I mean, you could technically probably say that. Another thing is just the salvation of the Jewish people. This must come together. Uh, there's some other simple stuff, this one world currency that we see. And you look at credit cards and Bitcoin and all these other kind of ideas out there. I listened to a podcast on currency. It was such a, a geeky thing, but I actually kind of enjoyed it. I'll be honest, it was unique. A lot of it comes down to trust and what you know, you're using as currency. So there's been a number of different currencies all throughout the world. Uh, one world government, we see that definitely within the book of Revelation. The temple needs to be rebuilt. They're making plans for that. Um, if, they, if we got word that, you know what, the temple's being rebuilt tomorrow, I would say, you know what, okay, this is, this is escalating a little bit. Um, you see a peace treaty that needs to take place over in the Middle East. So, you know, there's different things that you could point to and say, you know what, that has happened or that has not happened. But understand at the end of the day, like what, what is important? That we get everything and we figure out that exact moment in time? No, it's not. It, what matters is that all this stuff that we're, we're going through, all these things that, we, that are happening is what? It's pointing towards one certain thing. It's pointing towards what? The return of Jesus Christ because that's what's the most important thing for you and for me. One of the most important things is that we are able to go and spend eternity with God in heaven and that the promise of that is within scripture. So I have a few passages here that I wanna share with you and you're probably like, finally, we need to get to some scripture. I understand, all right? So here we go. Uh, this is John 14, three, and this is Jesus Christ talking, all right? This is Jesus Christ talking to his guys and it's kind of an intriguing um, a passage and he says this, I will go, I love this passage, this should give you peace, if nothing else gives you peace today, this should give you peace, all right? He says this, he says, and I will go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am. He went, <laughs> 
at the end of the Gospels, what did he do? He took off. He went, he ascended up to the Father. He ascended up to heaven. He went to go prepare a place for you and for me if we start that relationship with Christ. He says this, so that you may be with me. God wants us with him. This world seems like, you know, the sky is on fire and things are going crazy. You can't get an airline and ticket. I mean, there's so many things that are going on right now. But what we do know is that Jesus Christ wants you to be with him forever and ever and ever for eternity. That should give you some peace. That should give you some hope. And there's another one that's simply this. It's uh, Mark 13, 32. And this is why, you know, we kind of look at this as a, a very important passage. It says, but about that day or hour, about that time, you know, people are saying, when's Jesus coming back? You know, he actually makes a reference to this. The end of days, he actually tells us a little bit about the timing of this. And it's, but about that day or hour, no one knows. No one knows. Nobody knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. I don't, you're gonna go, you know, wait a minute, it's the Trinity, I don't understand this. How could the Son know something, or the, the Father know something the Son doesn't? It's the Trinity, right? When Jesus Christ was on this earth, he did not know the day and the time. The angels do not know the day and the time. They don't know that moment. So if somebody comes to you next week and says, hey, you know what, Jesus Christ is coming back next week, you may wanna be a little bit leery of that person. No one knows that moment. But what we do know is that he is coming back because he said he's going to prepare a place for us and that he will be back. <laughs> so that should be comfort, right? I know we look at the Mayan calendar, right? In 2012, the world was gonna end. Not really, didn't really happen, did it? You know, there's people groups all over the place that are saying, you know what, the world is, you know what, and they're given dates and times and all this. What do we know? We know that he's coming back. Do we know the time? Not so much. You know what, and that's okay. That's okay, you know, if you ask somebody, you know what, hey, would you want to know the time that you die? And nine out of 10 people are most likely gonna say, I do not wanna know why, because you live your life completely different. <laughs> you know, it's like we should live every single day like he's coming back tomorrow, like he's coming back tonight. You know, the third passage, and this is one of the beauty, beautiful passages about this, and there's a, there's a number of other ones, but this comes from 1 Thessalonians. Uh, chapter four, this is Paul writing the church at Thessalonica. And he says this, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command with the voice of the archangel. I don't know about you, but I cannot wait to hear this voice. I can't really wait to hear the voice of God, but understand the voice of the archangel, that has to be special. I think when you hear that, you're gonna go, oh, okay, that was different. That wasn't mom yelling at me. That wasn't dad yelling at me. That was special. That was, there was something different to that. And it's the voice of the archangel. And with the trumpet call of God, this is interesting because we see the trumpet call a number of times. We see it in Revelation chapter four, verse one, not Revelations, don't throw the S on there, but Revelation chapter four, verse one, we see, the, we see that, that imagery again. Anytime you see something, someone of royalty or, or a power of military might, you know, you see the trumpet that goes in front of that. And that goes all the way back, even to this time. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. I always thought about this when I was young, that it, if it was a sunny day, Jesus Christ was not coming back. That's what I always thought. Um, because this clearly says that there's gonna be clouds. And if there's gonna be clouds, that's just, you know, then there has to be clouds outside but for the Lord to come back because he's gonna be up there hanging out with us. And so we will be with the Lord forever, forever, forever. When Jesus Christ comes back for us, we are going to be with him at that point forever. You know, I know that timeline you saw, you know, the tribulation will be with the Lord, right? During the millennial reign of Christ, yes, we will be with the Lord here with him. We will be with him forever. And I love the way the end of this passage ends up because this is so true. This is Paul saying this. He's telling them, he's telling them, this church, listen, here's some things that are gonna take place. And this is how Jesus Christ is gonna come. So, but at the end of it all, this is what we need you to do. Don't worry about the end of days. Don't worry about these ominous times, these unprecedented times. Don't worry about all these things. At the end of the day, encourage people with this. Listen to this, here we go. Verse 18, therefore, encourage one another with these words. What words? The words that Jesus Christ is gonna come back someday for you and for me. Those are the words. Those are the words. That's the encouragement. When I was growing up, there was always, you know, I'd always, I went to Sunday school. I went to, I went to church a lot. Some of you out there went to church just as much as I did. 
I went to church all the time, and I'd always hear almost every single week, you gotta be prepared, you gotta be ready, you gotta be prepared, you gotta be ready. Why, because if you're doing something bad, and Jesus Christ comes back, he's gonna catch you doing something bad. And I wasn't saying all the teachers told me the right things and theologically correct and all that, but it put this sense in me that, you know what, it seriously could be any moment. It could be any day. And so often, what do we do? We just blow by this idea that Christ is coming back. And that's something that we have to step back off of. We have to think this through. That it could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be tonight. It could be next week. It could be a month from now. You know, there's some things that's kind of like, you know, okay, let me get my head around this. What do we do with all this? You know, and there's definitely some application that goes <clears throat> in with this. So here's some simple stuff here that I kind of wanted to circle around with. Number one is simply this, live each day to the fullest. It does not matter (laughs) if Christ is coming back tomorrow, next week, next year, or 10 years from now. We are to live every single day to the fullest. You know, right now we have a whole lot of time. Like, how can I live my days the fullest? The NBA, can, the NBA season was canceled, right? There's no March Madness going on. How can I live my days to the fullest? I know you're thinking that. I know because you, everything, I just, I just heard that there's certain shows that we watch quite a bit that are getting canceled that were live shows that, you know, nobody wants to be around each other because everything going on. We're like, my goodness, you know what? Even our TV viewing habits are changing. I mean, everything's going, how about we take this time and make it and, and, and use it to the fullest? Get the Monopoly board out. Do what we need to with the kids. Grab the family. Be able to spend some time together. But understand, spiritually, we are to live to the fullest, not just entertainment-wise, just not why we are here trying to clutter our lives up with stuff to do. Like, God has literally said, you know what? You are all gonna be on pause. And I think we're all right now realizing how crazy our lives really are. And we can't, we're, we are trying to live our lives to the fullest in what? The way the world shows us to live. And God's going, no, let's, let's back off of all that entertainment. Let's back off of all these things that you're involved in. Let's back off of all those sports and all those events and all those bands and the choir and just concerts and anything else that we put into our life. He's saying, you know what I need you to do is just live life to the fullest with me. You know, John 10, 10 is an amazing verse and it's, it, it sums up how God wants us to live. The second thing is simply this, is to have confidence of where you'll be. This is so important because so many Christians, you go to church and you hear this. You go to church and you, you, you kind of have the sense that, you know what, I, I think I know where I'm going. You know what, I was confronted with this question way back and it was simply this, if you died today, where would you go? If you literally died, it's so crazy, it's so bad, right? It's such a bad question, why would you even ask that? But it's true, it makes you evaluate everything. If you died today, where would you go? And that's probably not the most politically correct thing to say right now when people are passing away from this virus and everything that's going on. But man, you know what? No better time to think through eternity than now. Because guess what? Jesus Christ is coming back, but you know what? There is urgency because we are not guaranteed another day. We're not. So let me ask you, have confidence. Have confidence. You know what? If you... If you have started a relationship with Jesus Christ, you truly 100% started a relationship with Jesus Christ, you're gonna know it. (laughs) If you have any question in your heart, if you have any question in your mind, you need to think through this. There's no better time than now. You're sitting on your couch, you're comfortable, you're in your PJs, maybe you're out in the park and you're watching this on your phone. I don't know where you're at right now, but there's no better time than right now. Right? It says that we have to put our trust in him. This isn't your grandmother's faith. This isn't your mom's faith. This is yours. This is personal. This is between you and God, nobody else. And so many Christians on this planet, so many Christians in Northeast Ohio, what they've gotten up and they've gone to church and they've done the rituals and they've done the thing and they've gone to Easter and they've gone to Christmas, they've never made it personal. And this is your chance. This is your time. If reading these passages made you nervous, why are they making you nervous? If you hear end of days, this is almost, there should be this little bit of optimism. I know that's weird. A little bit of optimism because you know where you're going to be. Do you have that confidence? And if you have that confidence, please live like it. Please live like it. Third thing is simply this. Let others know so that they can have the confidence that you have. Man, you gotta tell somebody. 
This is like Paul told the church of Thessalonica, you need to encourage other people with this. And you're probably thinking, you know what? I don't wanna be one of those religious nuts. I don't wanna be one of them crazy people. I don't wanna be one of those people that, you know, tries to influence others in a good way. <laughs> I mean, you should be. You know, you think of, you know, being a crazy person. Let me just show you a couple pictures here, right? I'm gonna show you a couple pictures of some things that are, you know, kind of happening right now. You ready for this? We're wrapping ourselves up in garbage bags and duct tape with rubber gloves and masks. And we're also filling our shopping carts with all kinds of toilet paper. If there's, any a time, if there's any time to be crazy or to have a crazy conversation, it's now. Because people are gonna totally understand. I encourage you to tell somebody about the love of Jesus Christ. Because I'm telling you, when you start that relationship with him, it should be infectious. It should be something that you want to go and tell somebody else about. You should. You know, that's what God wants us to do. Why would we keep that secret? Why should, why should we keep it to ourselves? The fourth thing is simply this, read his word. You know, just read his word. You know, so, so many of us have bad theology. So many of us got our theology from the television. So many of us have got our theology from our parents that didn't have good theology. Your idea of who God is is skewed. Your idea of who God, his character is messed up. I encourage you to open God's word during this time. There's no better time than now. Put the Monopoly board away. Put anything away. Put the clue board. Put whatever it is, that, whatever you're playing, whatever you're doing this during this time, get out his word and start reading some of these stories. See how he showed up to Gideon. See what happened with Ruth. See what happened with the prophets, with Elijah. See what happened in the New Testament with Paul in the book of Acts. He was shipwrecked and then a snake bit him. I mean, this crazy stuff. Amazing things and see how they respond and what God's purpose was for it. Man, there's no better time to get good theology than right now. And that comes through what? Reading his word. You know, there's one more passage that I want to share with you and we'll be finished up and you can get back to raking leaves or <laughs> mowing the lawn or whatever it is. That maybe it's just trying to, I don't know, enjoy the rest of your day. But Romans 8, 18 through 19. Man, this is one of those passages, man. It's like this just amazing chunk of scripture. If I can call it a chunk, it's an amazing chunk of scripture. Um, it's about like just creation wanting to get back. And I won't go into the whole thing. I'll just read to you a couple verses by encouraging your homework is to get Romans 8 and just read this through and just kind of resonate with this. And this is what we should be doing. And this is what our groans should be to want to desire to get back to God. And so when you hear end of times, this should be something that you go, you know what? I can identify with that. You know what? Because I have that in me. Listen to, these, listen to this verse. This is Romans 8, uh, verse 18 and 19. I consider that our present suffering. The suffering that Paul is experiencing is pretty intense. Understand that the suffering that the, the Roman Christians were experiencing at this time was pretty intense. Understand that we here in the United States of America, we have it pretty good. And even though some of us are getting laid off and there's, there's struggles and we're having that thoughts of, oh, how am I gonna pay the rent? And you know what, is my mortgage gonna just... Ah, you know, we have a lot of thoughts right now and a lot of uncertainty and it's unprecedented. You know what? But you look at Paul and the things that he was going through. He was looking at jail time. You know what? He was looking at potentially being martyred. You know, there are a number of things that he was contemplating that most of us have not had to contemplate yet. And this is why he says, you know what? At the end of the day, this is what takes place in our heart and our mind and our being. Listen to this. He goes on, he says, I consider that our present suffering are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Someday we will reveal God. You know, there is some day that we will be able to tell the world about him. Verse 19, for the creation waits, listen to this, the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. You know, it's like this waiting, you know, what I cannot wait, you know, what I cannot wait for him to come back. I cannot wait for him to do what he's gonna do. I cannot wait for these end of days, you know, for him to finally make everything right again. It was right at one point. At one point it was perfect. It was amazing. Sin entered the world. That is what separates us from Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is that bridge to get to, of course, God. Where are you at with that today? You know, you look through this passage and you're like, you know what? Creation groans to be closer to God. Creation groans for this to be made right. You know, when you hear the coyotes in your backyard start to howl and start to bark, you know, you go, you know what? That's creation, like groaning to go back. When you see those deers running through the, the, the woods and you see, you know, just wildlife, you know, just 
either having fun or, or struggling. You, you know what, those are the groans when you, when you see these trees, these giant trees just swaying and creaking. You know what, those, that's like creation, just wanting God to make things right. It's those groans. I encourage you today, as we look at this scripture, you know, what are we doing with this? Are we keeping it in? Is it a secret? Is it something that we are telling the world? Where are you at personally with it today? You know, that is my question that I have for you. I know this is kind of a strange thing, it's online, you know, but have you had that moment? Have you had it personally with God? Have you had that moment where you say, you know what? There was that time, there was that, there was that day, there was that night, there was that, you know, I got together and this person walked me through this and there was that time I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Can you think of that moment? It's like someone getting married and saying, you know what? I don't really remember getting engaged. <laughs> Anyone that got marriage remembers when they got engaged. It's like when you give your life to God, you remember the moment in time where you go, you know what, I surrender. I surrender my life. Have you ever done that? Jesus Christ is coming back no matter what we believe. You know, some people are like, I'm an atheist, I don't believe in God, I don't have to even consider this. I'm telling you, no matter what we believe, God's word is God's word and his promises are true. He is coming back and it could be tomorrow or the next day or the following, we do not know. But where are you at personally with him? I'm gonna pray right now and I'm gonna encourage you. If you've never said those words to the Lord that you want him as your Lord and Savior, I wanna encourage you to do that. You might need to go in like the other room. You may need to go, you know, out on the deck. You may need to go in the bathroom. You may need to go somewhere else. I'm not sure where you need to go to right now. Maybe you can just do it right there in front of your entire family. Say, you know what, everybody? I have never done this. And today is the day I'm giving my life over to the Lord. That would be a special day for your whole family. Maybe your whole family needs to do this. Maybe your whole family needs to have a real good conversation. Maybe, Dad, you need to facilitate that conversation. Maybe you need to have that talk with your son, with your daughter, with anyone that's sitting with you. Hey, have you ever given your life to Christ? Have you ever told the Lord that you want him as your Savior? It only comes through Jesus Christ. It only comes from the cross. He gave his life for you and for me so that we could be with him forever in heaven for eternity. Why would he come and die in a brutal way that he did if we could somehow walk enough people across the street and do enough good things to get there? It comes down to us going, you know what, God? You're number one. I wanna give my life to you. I wanna live for you. Your will, not my, be done. That's what we have to get to. I'm gonna ask you to, while you're sitting there, just to close your eyes and we are gonna pray and then we're gonna wrap this thing up. God, we come before you and we lift you up, Lord. Lord, we praise you. Lord, in this, these ominous times, these times that are difficult, they're unprecedented, Lord. We've never seen stuff like this. Uh, it's tough, it's difficult, Lord. We are struggling. Lord, we are trying to get through this. We're trying to make sense of this. Lord, my prayer is for the person sitting at home uh, that they would have comfort, that they would have peace. Lord, you can give peace. We see that in scripture. Lord, it can only come from you. True peace can only come from you, Lord. And I pray that every single person watching this right now that are listening to this, that are part of this service, Lord, that they would be able to have that peace that passes all understanding. And Lord, my prayers for that person that they don't know you, Lord. I mean, sure, they've heard of you. They know what you did on the cross, but they've never truly gotten to that point. They've never gotten to that point where they handed their life over to you. And Lord, as we pray right now, my prayer is that they would say, Jesus, I need you in my life. Jesus, I want you in my life. Jesus, I want you to be in control. I give you my life. Lord, my prayer is that they would say that today. Lord, my, my hope is that they would say those words. God, we love you so much. Lord, thank you so much for all that you've done for us, Lord. And I pray these things in your name, amen. Hey, thank you so much for being a part of the service. We appreciate you spending your time with us. Please take advantage of all the resources that we have for your kids and your students. If you're looking to give still, we encourage you to go onto our app or onto our homepage at neochurch.org. Thank you so much once again for being a part of this and this online service. We look forward to being together again sometime soon. God bless.